I'm always really curious about how designers live. <laughs> Is that going to be the sound bite for yeah, the show? Sure. <laughs> like visuals are like the most boring thing you can show me. It's your marketing budget, yeah. which uh, was huge. <laughs> <laughs> Did we pay the bills? <laughs> Welcome to another episode of MAD Podcast. Today we have a very special guest, Joshua Bradenbach. Nailed it. <laughs> From uh, Rice. Uh, he's a co-founder, executive creative director. I'm, sh I'm sure you guys know Rice, award-winning design studio based right here in Ho Chi Minh City, uh, working with clients all around the world. Also, father of two. Father of two. Yeah. Most of you don't know this, but uh, Josh and I actually had an opportunity to work together 14 years ago? No, 13 years ago. That sounds about right. Yeah. Um, Pretty long time ago. At the same agency, uh, different department. Do you remember anything from that time? Do you want to recall anything from that time? I, I mean, I remember a lot of things from that time. It was yeah. for, formative years. Yeah. Formative years uh, you, working. You had in, just arrived in Vietnam. Right? I'd, I've been in Vietnam since 2006. Uh, so I'd been there for a little while when you came around. Yeah. Um, I was an art director mm. then kind of moved into this design director role. Yeah. I think that's when you, when you came in. Yeah, I came in 2010. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was on my way out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what do you like most about that time? Because I think a lot of the the guys now, they don't have that experience from like, you know, yeah. over a decade ago. Yeah. Like, the scene was so different then. So right? different. Yeah. So incredibly different. I mean, yeah. what I like the most is just reflecting on how much things have changed here. Mm -hmm. And I, that's one of the primary reasons I've I could never leave. I was like, just so captivated. Yeah. I mean, at that time it just seemed, you know, as it, as it does today, there's just so much potential, so many amazing things for people to do and get involved in. Yeah. But, um, you know, there were no agencies like ours. Yeah. Like yeah. yours, like mine. Yeah. Um, there were only the big advertising agencies and that's why, <laughs> you know, I went in and, and worked there, but, um, learned a lot, but it was like always this feeling that like, Things could be done a little bit differently. Yeah. And I think we need to like open this up a little bit. So mm -hmm. I think to answer your question, what I like the most is just that continued buzz of possibility. Yeah. It's incredible. Why did you think we didn't try to change anything at the global agency level? Why was this urge to do our own thing? It's a good question. Because I think a lot of people in that position, right? They had a big company. Yeah. They want to do something different, but why not try to change things there? We did. <laughs> yeah. We actually changed a lot there. That's true. We changed a lot there. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think there's something about taking that jump, t taking that risk, mm -hmm. that leap, that situation of discomfort yeah. is oh so enticing. You know, anybody that wants to start their own studio has that inside of them or start their own thing, mm -hmm. they probably should. Yeah. Like what's holding you back? Yeah. The only thing that was holding me back from doing it was a paycheck. Mm, and, uh, you know, that had, did you have experience running a business before? Cause I did not <clears throat> have experience running a business before. I, I had experience building up the design department yeah. within the agency. And that was, you know, just a little bit of a yeah. eye opener, yeah. you know, bringing people on board, helping people kind of figure out what they're good at, how they want to grow. Yeah. That was really, really exciting. On the business side, I was very inexperienced. Yeah. Um, my business partner, Qian, yeah. who you know very well, um, had a little bit more background there, but man, we figured everything out the hard way. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get to the hard lessons in a bit. <laughs> Let's reminisce a little bit about, okay. Uh, okay. about Low. The, the agency was called Low. Yeah. What was the work that you were most proud of at low yeah back then and then what are you like embarrassed about oh my gosh all right nothing nothing from those days ended up in my book there's okay. nothing i really carry with me yeah um i think that's probably true of like anyone's past you know even yeah. five years but ah so the main client was unilever yeah okay so i'm gonna i'm in a situation today where it's my job to tell true stories. Mm. What I have is like an abundance of truth to play mm. with. Yeah. I think the challenge in advertising is you, you've got to like create a story. You know, you've got to kind of like invent something. Yeah. Um, we did an amazing campaign for Omo, mm. um, this laundry soap. Yeah. 
where it was all about kids like getting their clothes dirty and Oma will take care of the rest. Yeah. Uh, I can't believe I'm talking about this project. <laughs> Um, but we, we, we convinced the client to do something really incredible, mm. to build an enormous garden of flowers mm. that kids could actually come to mm. and play in and get dirty, um, but create a, simultaneously a mural. Yeah, yeah. A mural of a tet scene, yeah. a beautiful tet scene of mother and child. Mm. And then we had to actually shoot that in London. We had to work with um, these incredible the garden in London photography studio. Oh. It was recreated uh, in the studio, kind of piece by piece. Yeah, I, it turned out um, amazingly well. Mm. Uh, but the, the idea that you know we could like kind of involve like a large group of people to actually yeah. like do a project together, you know, it wasn't the most revolutionary thing ever. But I yeah. think that I found that a really strong project because it opened up the kinds of projects that were being done in the agency at that time. Yeah. If that made sense. Yeah. Now, if Unilever came to Rice now, yeah, what would change in how you work with them, in the kind of ideas that you would show them? Um, oh my gosh. Um, if they're listening. <laughs> yeah, they might be. <laughs> would you just say no? We had it such a bad time ten years ago. No more. No, no, no. We we, we entertain everything because yeah. there's there's you know there's always an opportunity to, to do something good. Yeah, sure. Right. I don't think they would probably come to us right now, <laughs> but. Um, there's always the opportunity to do something yeah. uh, authentic. Yeah. I think we would be like looking for what is authentic here. To Unilever. Yeah. yeah. To that product. Mm. I see, I see. <laughs> okay, let's fast forward a little okay. bit. Lowe's done. Uh, you've opened Rice now, I think 2013 or 12? 2011. 2011, okay. Yeah. Um, out of like uh, the, the antique street. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was the first address. And who was the first client? Uh, Maru. Ah, uh, yeah. Back then, they weren't Maru yet, right? They're like four. They were. This... They were two people. I see. Uh, they were not yet known as Maru. Yeah. yeah, that was our first client. I mean, the ambition to start an agency here was to do something exactly like that. Yeah, just to, to find a product that can tell a great story mm. from here. That can be. It was almost like a vision we had of like something that could be sent all over the world yeah. to send a message of what's possible in, you know, story, yeah. product, agriculture, whatever, mm. culture. Um, so yeah, they were the first. Yeah. We, they, basically, we, we had an invitation to come to Samuel Maruta's house because mm. uh, he heard there were these guys that started doing branding, mm. uh, like a boutique branding studio. We showed up, he literally answered the door, mixing a bowl of chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> and we are like, the smell hit us. And so, like, I, I remember it very, very distinctly. And uh, they just started telling us what they were up to. And yeah. I mean, that was it. Just listening to that story, knowing how much substance was there. Mm. And it was just like a dream come true for some kids that just wanted to do like the best possible branding yeah. that they could. So um, that was the genesis of it. Wow. And obviously you guys have like progress a lot since 2011. A lot's changed. In terms of people, in terms of size and scope of the projects. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Looking back in those years, what was like the hardest thing about like running your own studio? Because studios open up every single month almost in yeah. Vietnam, right? Yeah. But studios with longevity, it's a handful. So what was like the hardest thing that you guys have to overcome to get to kind of we're still working on it. I mean, I mean, you probably, we are. you probably know it. Yeah, you do sure. not, we should compare notes more often, but I mean, scoping, yeah. kind of like. Scoping is like costing out what you want to do, right? For a project. Yeah. Yes. Discovering what that scope should be. Cause you yeah. know, everybody shows up, clients know what they need, mm. but sometimes we have to uncover a little bit more. Yeah. So like, Hey, I need like, I need an identity for my business. Yeah. Right now let's dig in. Yeah. And let's dig in and let's dig in. So um, I think in the beginning, being novices, basically, we were kind of like on the fees and like just completely overspending yeah, yeah. our time. Yeah. You know, we would be paid this much for this much work. Yeah. And we did it time and time again. Mm. But not, you know, there's a benefit there. You, you have people that are just trying to do the best possible work they can. Like yeah. everything we did was had a ridiculous amount of energy and focus put into it mm. just to make whatever it was completely 
yeah world class yeah. incredible so you know doing an album cover for mm. my friend's band this band fool's gold it was like one of our early projects yeah it's like neon installations right? yeah i remember yeah. thanks yeah but hey we like built these neon signs we yeah. took them to multiple locations around vietnam like yeah. the sand dunes of muine into this amazing photo shoot we worked with neil massey a really talented photographer yeah, yeah. no budget <laughs> um it, and i just looked back at it recently and i was like you know i don't think we would be able to do that today we would not yeah. be able to do that today yeah and run a profitable business. Exactly. Like, it's just impossible. Yeah. So we were not profitable for a long time. Do you think it's a natural progression? Because every time I talk to the founder, it's the same. It's like, oh, I'm working on my friend's album. And then now, like, you know, it was no budget. Yeah. And I'm like doing this amazing work. And now it's impossible to do that yeah. because you have people to feed and stuff like that. I've been quizzed about it very recently. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, looking for that yeah where is that um and i had to kind of search a little bit and, and 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 tell myself and him where it actually is it's it's still there yeah but we're handling it in a healthier way <laughs> to be honest like yeah because if we're not running a good business then we're we're just not gonna be able to do it. all of the things that we want to do that are greater and greater yeah um i'm trying to explain that well but you know, you start off just doing everything out of passion, yeah. just like kids that are just hungry to do amazing stuff. Like yeah. I, I see amazing things come out of this studio from your team. Yeah. I, I get that sensibility. Yeah. It, it, it is there, right? You, yeah. If you don't like hang on to that, then that's a huge problem. Yeah. But I think you learn how to like package it in. Yeah. And now and maybe I've matured a bit, <laughs> a little bit, I hope. <laughs> I think for me, it's in the strategy work. It's mm. in the way I work with my clients where yeah. we used to just like say, okay, thank you. I, I heard what you need. I'm going to go away and like make this amazing shit. Yeah. Now it's like workshops. It's much more like in depth and intensive and strategically yeah. the work is so good. And that's, that's where I put all that passion now. Yeah. And we have amazing designers that are probably better than me yeah. that just take that, you know, and they've been on the whole journey. Yeah. So I'm trying to wrap this up, but I think it's, <laughs> I think it's transformed. Yeah. We're still, you know, the artists we've always been. Um, but I think we get our kicks in slightly different ways now. Yeah. Does that, that make sense? Yeah. Um, I mean, for, for some people, right? The, the passion <laughs> projects like Fool's Gold or some of the earlier work that we've done. Now we cannot do that because we're running a, a real company with a real payroll, right? Yeah. But the way I find time to work on those is I try to find sponsors for them. The artist may not have money for that, yeah. but I can find clients who can bankroll that. And then we're all happy. Sure. Right? Yeah. The client gets amazing work. The artist gets free work. And then we get paid for the bill. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. That's why we don't do passion work. <laughs> Now we still do, but I, I think that what I would add to your point is that we would try to bring in a third party, you know, still respect the artist, but everybody gets paid. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's no real reason. I think in, yeah. you figured it out. Like there's no real reason to do mm -hmm. it for free. You know, yeah. when, I guess when you're, in, when you're coming up and, you know, we've built our reputation on that kind of work and maybe, maybe that's something mm. everyone has to go through. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's a natural progression. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, it's like marketing costs, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's your marketing budget, yeah. which uh, was huge. <laughs> <laughs> Did we pay the bills? <laughs>Let's talk about um, talents. Because uh, I think a lot of things changed in Vietnam over the last 10 years. And I think a big part of that is the quality of the talent. But for some reason, I feel the quantity is still very small. Mm -hmm. Like there's still only a handful of people that I'm like, damn, I want to poach that person, you know, or something like that. Do you feel the same or do you think the pool is bigger? I think the pool is a lot bigger for mm -hmm. sure. I just think there's more people like more interested in all of the minutia of what you can do yeah. in the creative industry where before it was kind of like maybe a bit more narrow, like mm, um, art director. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. And now I think people are questioning those kinds of titles now. Yeah. I think bringing like, 
you see you see a lot of amazing portfolios come in. Yeah, I think you know what we're really looking for is um, like hard workers, character. Yeah. You know, people that just want to like. How do you find that in a CV? Like they send you something. Yeah, you, how do you know they're like a hard worker? You kind of don't. You don't. I mean, of course you can see what they've done, but yeah. um, it comes through conversation. We have to have like a lot of conversations. But it, it sort of occurs to me that I think it's the same everywhere. Mm. I think Vietnam, for me now, is the same as everywhere else. Mm. I think when maybe when we were working at Low yeah. before, we felt it was like really challenging. Mm. Um, but maybe we just. I don't know. Maybe the network was smaller. smaller. Mm. But you know, I hear the same things from friends who have studios in in the U.S. You know, yeah. It's it's the same. Hunt. Like we're having so much trouble finding good people. Uh, you is know? that your biggest issue? Finding like good talent? It's definitely. I think it's like always an issue. Yeah. 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 Mm. Cause there's different things. There's chemistry. There's like mm. ways of working t together. There's so many factors to it. Um, I think it's more like, uh, I don't know, it's kind of a complex topic, but I think when people join Rice, they tend yeah. to stay like mm. a pretty long time. Yeah. But I think there's a lot of uh, diligence put into like yeah. each other, like kind of understanding like this is the right fit. Yeah. And if it's the right fit, then, then that's... You have to put a lot of work into that finding yeah, those matches. Like, uh, I like think screening and onboarding, yeah. and that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, it it is. I I think it's a tough issue in Vietnam. One because formal education is not you know established to kind of pump out the talent that kind of like a modern studio I think would need. And then two, it's a growing economy, so I feel like talents have a lot of options. Yeah, right. Because if they don't go to the rice or to the lab, they can go to a tech company. Sure. Pay a little more. Yeah. Um, so I, I think it is challenging for us in terms of talent. Yeah. But it'll, it'll always be, I mean, I, yeah. Yeah. Our, we, we also, we have a quite international team too. Mm, yeah. True, true, true. So in one, you know, actually, you know, it'd be amazing if everybody was from here mm. in, in, in a lot of respects, it yeah. makes things smoother, clearer, better communication with clients and, and that sort of thing. But at the same time, I think it's a unique part of Rice mm. that we're, we have people from like kind of all over the world. Yeah. Um, and the team really likes that. Like people that are from Europe are like working mm. together, people from Vietnam, they're learning from each other. Yeah. And we're offering like quite a unique perspective to our clients. Yeah. So it, it, we, years back, we started getting requests to do projects in Japan, yeah. the Japanese based projects. And like my first question would be like, why? why? Like, surrounded by incredible studios yeah, sure. and the answer was like oh but we want something that's very new in a perspective yeah that was always the answer and it kind of dawned on me that it's maybe because of the mix in our mm. in our team so we're, we're kind of unique that way i think we have to spend uh you know more time and energy bringing people in and mm. there's there's lots of challenges there i'm yeah. sure you've encountered too um, but that's part of our unique dna yeah mix so whenever we get a, we get like a application, we always always ask, have you also applied to Rice? Really? Like, there's a reason. <laughs> um, that's so in interesting. Yeah, yeah. No, no, not by email, but in the mm -hmm. interview, we're like, oh, have you looked at Rice? Have you looked at blah 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 blah? And the reason we're doing so is because we want to make sure that they know what's out there in Vietnam. Uh, we don't want them to find out when they're already here and then want to move, right? Um, because we think we have a distinct um, culture and distinct uh, yeah. studio. So we're like, okay, have you looked at them? See if they're a better fit. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that, that we actually we, we do as a matter of rule. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you guys clearly have such a unique culture. Yeah. Like I, I love like the youthfulness and like the playfulness of it. Yeah. I think we- Scrappiness. <laughs> scrappiness, sure. It's cool. Sure. I like, I like this space. Yeah. I mean, I think we have like, we don't, broadcast much from inside yeah i think yeah. people like there's like a much different vibe yeah. so I'm, I'm always really curious about how designers because mm. you know we're like the two places to work right <laughs> like how designers live <laughs> is that going to be the sound bite for yeah, the sure. <laughs> how designers make that distinction sure. and I'm, I'm sure i'm always sure that when people apply mm -hmm. for rice they've probably mm. considered 
Yeah, we've or, had people who work at Rice and came to lab, or lab and came to Rice. So I, I think there's been a lot of that. Yeah, so I, I think that's that, that's a given. Um, in terms of broadcasting the culture, I think it's a very conscious effort on our end. Clearly, yeah, yeah. it's it's natural. It takes a lot of work. That's it why we don't do it. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> no, it is natural in the sense that we're not going to stage it, but some studio might not broadcast it. Yeah. But for us, we will broadcast it at the risk of looking childish or like we're messing around or anything like that. But the reason I broadcast it is because I want to people in here to feel like they're not behind a wall. Like they're not like when they come to the lab, they've lost themselves. Yeah. So it's like when they do something silly and if they're okay with that, we'll broadcast it. Uh, and I want people to think that, okay, if we make a mistake or we do something that's not perfect, we're still going to broadcast it. Sure. That, that culture is what I want to broadcast outside, but also what I want to build inside. I, yeah. think, I think that probably works to attract like, yeah. the kind of talent that would then, that's that chemistry thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, like they, they're like messing around, they're like iterating, that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, for the, yeah. It, it's very much like that at Rice as well. Mm. It's like, um, and we'll broadcast whatever. Yeah. It's just like people don't. I don't know why. Yeah. I don't know. Like, but who well, controls the social media then? I, honestly, like I, I do yeah. a lot of it. Yeah. Um, we're looking. Me too. Me we're too. looking for a person. <laughs> um, is this? I could like. Yeah. Do your thing. <clears throat> recruit through this podcast. Yeah. Sure. Um, we're looking for somebody to do that for sure. Yeah. But um, yeah, there's not that much. I don't know. There's not that much coming out. So I, I do have a trick that maybe you can we're, use. We're so busy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I do have a trick. Hook me up. So um, we collect a lot of it. But we don't broadcast right away. When there's a lull, yeah. then we broadcast. Sure. Yeah. Then it Stop, always feels stockpile. like yeah, stockpile. Because then you know I'm out, I'm not on the hunt for content. It's just like oh, it's kind of boring. Let's post something. All this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I'm act I'm always like um, kind of hounding the designers like what can we publish from our projects like yeah because I, I love just putting stuff out there. Mm -hmm. We we don't that much unfortunately, yeah. but I love putting stuff out because I know it's inspiring people around the world. Mm -hmm. Like how many times I hear people from other nations being really excited about Vietnam yeah. because of stuff that we're publishing or you guys are publishing. Yeah. Like, like we're literally uh, representing mm -hmm. like kind of the creative industry. I mean, I don't want to talk too big about it, oh but Kum Kum is going to DM me. It's like, <laughs> did I leave him out? No, yeah, like Kum Kum and all these other guys, but they it's okay. They, they don't put much stuff out. Yeah. Um, uh, They're not they watching do, my show, that's for sure. They do incredible, <laughs> yeah. They do incredible work. They do incredible work. It's not really what I meant, but yeah. But it's, I, I love putting that stuff out because sure. I know it's like getting all over the place. So I'm always like, hey, like what can we publish? And the designers yeah. are kind of, I don't know, at Rice, they're kind of like, Let's get this done really, really well. Yeah, you guys are perfectionists. Methodically. Right? Yeah. And you would think that comes from me. I'm not, comes from them. I'm the opposite. <laughs> I'm super impatient and yeah, I just yeah. want to show everyone what we're doing. Yeah. It's kind of it's kind of odd actually. That. Yeah. And also it's self reinforcing, right? Like because we've done this kind of content for maybe three years now. Yeah. Everybody's like, oh, post this. Or hey, well, uh, becomes habitual. Yeah, and it there becomes self enforced It's like a, a loop, right? Yeah, that makes so, sense. So, like for example, you know, he he has access to the account as well. And yeah. We have another uh, person, four people, access to the account. Yeah. And they'll just take turn uh, doing it. I love that. Yeah. We there's multiple people with access to the account. Nobody does it. They don't touch anything. <laughs> maybe maybe they don't want to like I don't know what like. mess up the curated feed. It's like, <laughs> I think uh, we need to turn a corner on that. Like just sure, sure. do it. Yeah. Anyways, um, that's a challenge. Yeah. Let me interject a little bit and add some, um, uh, what's it called? Community questions. Oh yeah, great. So before you came on here, I, I, I sent out a picture of you and asked if people had questions and uh, we got a few interesting ones. You like the photo? Yeah, I love the photo. <laughs> I've seen the same photo for like six years, by the way. I don't <laughs> age. Cheating, I'm, you don't age. I'm actually 87 years old. <laughs> So what do you look for in a portfolio? I know you look for hard work in the talent, but in a portfolio, what do you look for? Poetry. Poetry? Really? Yeah. Like good writing. Thoughtfulness. Thoughtfulness. Just yeah. like, it doesn't have to be much, mm. but to be able to turn, like, I don't want to see, 
an emphasis on like aesthetics. I want to see like an emphasis on an idea, right? Mm -hmm. I guess that probably yeah. resonates with you. Yeah. Just smartness. Yeah. Anybody can, you know, do all the tricks. Yeah. Amazing, cool, typeface, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I just want to see a great idea. Yeah. Like, because I'm looking for people that I can interact with. Exactly. On an intellectual level. Intellectually, right? yeah, yeah. you know, and not, I don't geek out. I actually, my, the thing that I stay around the studio sometimes that shocks the team is I hate graphic design. Yeah, yeah, it's me not, too. It's not really, like, true, true, true but yeah. I, I don't, look, like, look at it. I don't, I don't geek out over it, yeah. um, we're telling stories yeah. that could be done a million different ways. We tend to do it with graphic design mm -hmm. because we're creating brand identities for brands. Yeah. But like the bulk of the work, it gets down to the bulk of the work at Rice is writing. Yeah. It's like synthesizing, taking mm. stuff out of the air, what we heard in a workshop, putting it together, mm. making it super clean and smart. Yeah building some principles around that and then design. And at that point, sure, I'll sit down and like go over all the details with the designers if they want. Yeah. But if they don't ask, I'm not like, you know, of course it's done well. Um, but to me, that's like the icing on the cake. Yeah. So when I'm looking at a portfolio, I'm like, how can I, how can I like have those moments with this person? Mm. Those moments where there's like sparks and like, yeah. you get super excited. Like, oh my God, I can't believe you figured that out. Yeah. yeah. Um, that kind of thing is super rare. Yeah. Um, maybe that's even like a better answer to this discussion on how it's difficult to find people. Yeah. I think it's rare. It's a rare thing. Like these, these people might work in journalism. Yep, they might exactly. work in finance. They might be lawyers. Yeah. But I think that's what I'm really like, like yeah. looking for. And, and, and graphic design is a practice. Mm. It's like playing tennis. You just keep practicing, you get better at it. Yeah. But the other thing is like a little bit, it's from somewhere else, like, mm. like a little bit from the soul or something. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so you poetry. heard it from Josh, okay? Poetry. It's poetry, <clears throat> articulating it through smart strategy, right? Um, storytelling. Ideas. Like ideas. Clarity. Yeah. Like I've always told my guy, like visuals are like the most boring thing you can show me. Yeah, it's like, I don't know why you, you keep showing me like graphic design inspiration. But yeah. That's not the task. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So portfolio, graphic design is important, but um, very. Yeah. The other thing is the actual cake. Graphic design is icing on the cake. I think the graphic design is like, it's a given. Yeah. It needs to be super good. Yeah. Okay, cool. Done. Yeah. Now let's talk. Yeah, exactly. Uh, second question. Okay. Like you talk a lot about sustainable design or, or long term brand building and stuff like that. So one of the questions from the community is what constitutes sustainable design? Sustainable, not in the green sense, mm -hmm. but like it lasts long. Well, I think it's back to the kind of strategic work. Yeah. Synthesizing. At the end of the day, I think all we're trying to do is find yeah. out what is the most distinctive, like the extreme differentiation maybe of yeah. that thing. Say it's a company. Mm. What makes them the only one like that? Mm. And then distilling that down building like a strategy around that mm. and then creating identity from that, you know, pinpoint yeah. thing. I think if you do that well and it's stripped down and it's authentic and all of those words, um, I think it should last yeah. forever until they stop doing it. Yeah. Uh, and it should grow with them. It should build uh, equity as it moves forward. And like, you think about these things, Mm. You understand that it has opportunity and legs and that it can change shape. Kind of like, I don't know, I, I don't know if it's the best example of ours or, but like the, the identity for four P's. Four P's, sure, yeah. We worked on that for a year mm -hmm. um, at Rice with, with Mark, who's now their creative director. Yeah. Um, he'd be good on the show. I, I had him on the show. Oh. First season. I caught it. But he was bad. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Mark's hilarious. Um, but the bulk of the work was just figuring out parts and pieces. Yeah. So here you had these incredibly ambitious business owners who were going to change the world. Yeah. That had a pizza restaurant. Yeah. You know, okay, we're going to take a pizza restaurant to like this world changing mm. brand. And that identity that we created for them, you know, it's just like, 
typed out. Yeah. It's, it, it's not like earth shattering. Mm. I don't think it's on like people's mood boards. Yeah. Um, it might be. You'd be surprised <laughs> how many times I've seen that in, uh, uh -huh. not ours, but like I've seen it in portfolio references. Yeah. Actually, I, I love, I love it. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, but the, the point is that it works. Yeah, sure. And that they went from like pizza four peas, everything to like four piece mm. and pizza four peas is just one thing that they do. Mm. And it, everything else is four piece, four yeah. piece, four piece, four piece. It's this like living, breathing sure. system that they're able to live within for the next hundred years. And I'm sure Masuko and Sunday have a plan for that hundred years. Yeah. Um, and they saw it and they're like, did it go? That's sustainable. Yeah. I don't think, you know, it, it's because it's thought through and it's simple mm. and they probably won't have to um, rework it. They'll just have to pour water on it and watch it grow. Yeah, sure. Just like that. So that's, that's we try to do that every time. Mm. If I'm not producing something that's going to last, then we've like failed yeah. in our criteria. Mm. Um, sure, it's happened, but also like, you know, businesses change and, mm. and things drop off and sure. grow. But that, that's the goal is to make it sustainable. Yeah. And like, you know, you can, you can embellish upon that, like having it be stripped down and is probably more sustainable in the green sense too. Like mm. it should, it's not just a visual identity. It creates opportunities to do things their way or in a, in a more ecological way or, you know, it, it sort of like answers questions. Yeah. So when you're running a company, and like you try to do projects on the side, I think to understand what it's like to be a client, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which we do a little bit of that as well. So many things, so many questions to answer. Yeah. How are we going to like package this thing? How are we going to display this? How are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? The, I think a well done sustainable identity brands, brand identity should answer like so many of those questions mm. without extra work. Yeah. You know, it should just, oh, of course, because we do it like that. Yeah. And when we've done that really, really well, it's actually inside of the written document. Mm. It's inside of their brand book values and their mm. brand book. Not, you know, and then it goes all the way back. Um, you know, when we worked on that project, four piece, for example, these, there are these three words that are their values, mm. humanity, <laughs> sustainability, and sharing. Mm. So those three words, from our point of view as the designers became like a, a criteria for everything else. Yeah. How would they do a chair? Mm. Let's put it through that criteria. Yeah. So, you know, it just kind of like produces all of the answers. Yeah. Let me try to distill it. That was it. long winded. No worries. I'll distill it for the, uh, <laughs> for the community. Cheers. So sustainable design. It's interesting that you did not mention design at all. You mentioned strategy. You mentioned brand values and purpose, mm -hmm. right? And then the design kind of naturally flows through those filters. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's so sustainable like design. Clarity. Yeah. Like it's yeah. not actually graphic design. <laughs> That's interesting. It's kind of like figuring out kind of a math problem or something. Yeah. So my team is super bored um, of hearing me talk about strategy. They don't know why I keep talking about strategy, right? Um, they want to come to me and like, have me show them something with so they could just design to it right sure but for me i'm like okay, it doesn't sound fun yeah so like what's the strategy why are we doing this like so to you what is strategy it's like a I short mean, version of what strategy is if you take the word and put it in different contexts mm. like on a sports mm. in a sports context or something mm. it's how you're gonna do a play mm. and like win the game mm. or how you're gonna like get to the moon yeah you know, it's just the planning. Um, it starts with the brief, mm. you know, brief comes across, uh, we need a, a new logo and a new colors. And a, like, really, do you? Yeah, and like exactly. you just question everything, mm. open it all up, work on a planning. That's, that's the beginning of like strategy right there. So, yeah. cause, um, we're not, I don't think we're ever working on a project just to make something look better or just to make something like nicer or whatever. I think it's always about getting from point A to point B. Mm. So our clients are going through some sort of transformation or, or maybe they just received funding and they, they're like going to like expand or mm. something's happening to initiate that relationship with us. Yeah. So we're part of that 
plan to get from A to B, or from here to the moon. So we have to build like a plan and strategy. And the design is part of it, the yeah. languaging is part of it, the narrative. So it's all strategy, mm. but it, and it starts with like, what are we going to do for you? Yeah. I mean, I've, I've undersold work. I've, I've actually gone back and be like, you only need this and this. Mm, sure, sure. And then we'll see what happens. Come back. Yeah. Because um, you don't want to be doing too much. You don't want to be doing un unnecessary stuff. Yeah. Even if, even if they're willing to pay you. <laughs> I mean, no, honestly, sometimes we're like, uh, we're not the studio for you. You should try this. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. What they do is a lot better than what you want to do. Oh, what for sure. Do. Yeah, that's, that's important, I think, too, is being true <laughs> to... Like, it's not going to end well anyways. You know, yeah. we're, and we fake ourselves to, to that relationship. Yeah. 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 Next and last question from the community, and then we'll bring back to our main thing. Okay. Where are the women in, in leadership roles in the design scene in Vietnam? Uh, probably everywhere. Uh, I feel like Vietnam is a nation that's led by women. Yeah. Um, luckily, uh, I hope that more of them find their way into the creative industry. Mm. Our team is like I think primarily women. Um, I uh, all the CD levels are mostly I know. men, right? Yeah, because yeah, I, 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 I asked this. Um, I, I thought the interest, the question was interesting because at the last event I did, yeah, it was all women, uh, all men as well. True. Yeah. And when I've we, I've been on some panels with you, or yeah, it's all men, right? <laughs> like it, it, it sucks. Yeah. It so really wh sucks. Why do you think so? I don't know, but I think it's like. Um, a leftover from like old days, you know, you think so? it feels like that. Mm. Um, but it's not like you're keeping anybody from getting promoted. <laughs> neither am I, but I just certainly don't not. See them. Yeah. You know, our finance team, our, our finance director, project managers, store manager, women. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and then, yeah, when it gets to like the design team yeah. to debt currently, it's, yeah. it's been more diverse. Currently it's mostly men. Yeah. But you don't have an answer. I don't have an answer. I don't have an answer. Um, I, have an answer. I wish it were more diverse. Yeah, yeah, same, same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think women are better at getting stuff done than. Better. Yeah, I know. I mean, I love working with women. At some point, we had like ninety percent women here. Yeah. It's it's balancing it out, uh, balancing out a little bit now. But even so, at the design director or CD level, we don't have a lot of women. Yeah. yeah. Which is a shame. Yeah. I hope it changes. Yeah. Back to you and me a little bit. How do you think about, what do you think about remote work? Because, you know, off the back of the pandemic, yeah. we had this little experiment with uh, working from home, <clears> right? <throat> remote work. Yeah. Uh, so much so that we opened a, a remote studio in Dalek, right? But how do you as a company founder see remote work or working from home? Everything's possible. Mm. It's completely possible. We did it. Mm. We got through it. We did everything we're able to do. Mm remotely yeah i just found it slower slower harder harder like i felt like with my hands tied behind my back yeah like i can still like get down the street but um yeah i found it challenging and i know the team did too yeah there's a magic that happens when you get people together in a space like this mm. and you have stuff around you you have access i mean it's like it's so much faster it was kind of like when I was uh, when I was like a teenager, like twelve or thirteen. I really wanted a guitar. Mm. You know, it was like I wanted to be like in Nirvana. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm that old. Um, and my mom bought me the worst guitar. Yeah. Like it was like this terrible piece of crap mm. to push the strings down. It's really really hard. Mm. But I learned on it, and I got kind of good on it. Yeah. And then I got an electric guitar, and it was so easy. Mm. Like that's the way I felt. Um, coming back into the studio mm. at first actually it was a little bit like oh my god we're like we're all back together like it was because we it took us a minute to actually start like putting work up again yeah because i think we were so used to doing everything here so it was amazing that we could do all of that we learned it it's fine if it ever happens again we'll be all right yeah but coming back into the studio it's been like an explosion of yeah. like energy mm. so I don't know why my answers are so long. So, yes, it could work. Yes, but doable, not preferable, not, not preferable, preferable at okay. all. I mean, I mean, we'll have like periods of it. Like, yeah, it's kind of like it opens up holiday time a little bit more, or mm -hmm. like kind of like going away. 
Yeah. Like, yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm going to be out of the office for like three days. Sure, sure. I'll work online. Mm. Where before, I don't think we talked like that. Yeah. yeah you yeah, know, yeah. or it seemed like, oh, like you're gone. Like mm. you're not going to be working. Mm. I, I think it opened up all kinds of possibilities. Yeah. So goods and bads. No, I, I agree. You know, like. How about you? Oh, personally, uh, as a as a member of the team, I sometimes prefer to work at home. It's more, it's quieter. Sure. And um, you know, I save time on commute and stuff like that. So I understand the appeal, but I do think it's slower. Yeah. Like what you said, and and for us at our level, uh, meeting management, like we do have a lot of things to handle, and it just takes too long to get a reply. Sometimes, right? yeah. We just like want to walk to over there and just talk talk yeah. to them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, what are you working on? Oh, yeah. cool. I like that. Bye. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That that's, exactly. that was gone. Yeah. So I totally feel you. <laughs> we also have we also have, you know, all kinds of language barriers and things mm, like sure. that. And so much comes through just like being with someone. We yeah. don't even really have to speak the same language at all. We can work on something together. Mm. Um, but online, like, oh my gosh. Yeah. It's like extra challenging for people and like, you know, people whose English was not their primary language or some people Vietnamese is not their primary language mm. too. So um, it started to feel really like we were really inconveniencing people yeah. from different places to do, to communicate. Yeah. Really unnecessary challenge. Yeah. I think that's the word so. It's unnecessary. In the pandemic, it was necessary. Right. It's unnecessary. It, it could work, but it's unnecessary. We're going to keep it for a little while and then just kind of like gather some more data, I think, uh, before we make any decision. But... Uh, question from the community. How do you apply? How do we apply at Rice? Um, go to our careers page <laughs> on our website. There's some job, what roles are job you, postings. What, what roles are you? Um... We're, we're seeking um, client service director. Yeah. Uh, somebody who is really senior. Yeah. Um, most of that work is done between myself, my partner, mm, Chian, yeah. our MD, Sebastian. Um, we want somebody um, that that's their sole focus. Yeah. Client service director. Mm. Take a lot of that off of our plate. And that's a whole whole world of amazing things to do yeah. that we probably don't do as well as we could. We're always looking for amazing designers that make poetry. <laughs> um, on the senior That's level, true. I think uh, at some point this year we'll be looking senior level designers. Yeah. It's probably like you're probably seeking yeah. as well. We're always on a rolling, yeah. like we're always like looking for good people. Yeah. We can always make room for good people. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I would say. Sure. Yeah. I think that's a good answer. Yeah. Especially if it's a design position. And, and hopefully they're all women. <laughs> <laughs> and um, for a recent grad, right? P putting together this uh, application. Yeah. What's the one tip you can give them? Poetry for sure in your portfolio, have an idea, think about strategy. But other than that, do you recommend anything like tips and tricks? Like just show up at an office unannounced? Or... Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Um, I think, you know, the, the most comfortable stage for us to like look at portfolios is it's just a classic email. Mm. Make the email your cover letter. Yeah. Put in a PDF mm. of your portfolio. Do you prefer a PDF or a link? I prefer a website. Do you? Yeah. If there's a link, I, that's kind of hand in hand. Either way. Mm -hmm. Website's okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and keep it simple. Mm. And the portfolio itself, keep it really narrow. Like, yeah. top three things yeah. that show, uh, I think, diversity. You know, mm. it's nice to see like a bit of a range, like, oh, they can do this, this, and this. Mm. Yeah, I think the rare ones that we get are like pretty short, you know, yeah. don't overload it. Yeah. Last one uh, from the community as well. How to manage creative people. How to manage creative people. Yeah. Creative people are a different breed, right? They're by nature kind of mm. like, I'm interested in this and interested in this. And also an ego, right? Sure. Because they're creative. Sure. Um, they attach themselves to their work, right? So how do you manage that and run a business at the same time? I think, and, I, and I'm not sure I'm great at it. Sure. Um, or learning. Yeah. But I'm really good at asking questions mm. uh, about the work that are um, encouraging what's there. 
Um, I never like straight up trash something. Like, I mean, maybe I don't see that much trash. Like, yeah, it's, it's like just asking the right questions. Sure, sure. It's like a process of like elimination. Why did, why, why does that work to that? And <clears throat> like our teams have worked on the whole strategy the whole way through. I think yeah. that's something, I don't know if every agency does that. Mm. Um, I think classically they don't like our seniors that come from like mm. really amazing design studios in the world they usually would like receive strategy yeah. like here's the strategy mm. and then kind of like go and work on the design mm. uh do you guys have a separate just, strategy department or the designers do the strategy the designers do I see. yeah mm. it's like all the creative team just does that whole thing and the project managers as mm. well it's like a, a team sure. uh, our clients get a team that all work on it all the way through and yeah. see it through you know we might even pull production in mm. like halfway through uh, to become part of that team as well, because there's a strategy in like choosing the right materials and things like yeah, that. Yeah. So, um, where was I? <laughs> I got lost. I got lost too. I what was my last question? I think we answered the question. Probably. No, managing okay, creative people. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Uh, I think managing is a tricky word, right? Yeah, yeah. Managing sounds like you're like herding cats or something. Mentoring, coaching. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's more like that. Yeah. I'm trying. And hopefully it's like coming across authentic. Mm. I'm trying to inspire sure. them and like help them grow and like maybe make it a bit hard on them. Cause like I might with experience, like see a yeah. simpler way of doing something and be like, did you try it like that? Did... Yeah. So I guess at the root of it, it's really important for me to establish mm. like the team thing. Mm. Like if I step in and suddenly I feel that I'm looked at as this kind of like, oh, Josh is in the room authority. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Like, that's sure. not what I'm looking for. Sure, sure. I don't want that. I just want to, I want to be like challenged back. I want to hear like points of view. So maybe we're going all the way back to like building that team. Mm. Like that's the team. Those people got on the team yeah. because they're team. Yeah. Um, so that's what we encourage. And then you don't have to manage anything. Yeah. Like we're like, there's people, yeah, they just don't stop because like they're they're involved, mm. they're committed to the team, they want to make it work, they want to make it great. Yeah, honestly, like now that I think about it, I'm not really like managing anything. Yeah, that's good. So rephrasing the question, it's actually not about managing creative <laughs> there, people. There you go. It's about mentoring, coaching. <laughs> just, took, just took me a minute to get there. <laughs> um, I know you got to run, so I'm gonna bring it home. Okay. Um, how would you describe the difference between lab and rice? For the people who might be considering joining one of our two teams. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think you guys, we, we do some of the same stuff. Yeah. I think what we're focused on is um, like all the way upstream. Mm -hmm. Like we want to work with founders or yeah. people in charge, if it's a big, huge organization to create solutions. Like yeah. that's sort of like from here to the moon. Yeah. There's that solution. We're going to go there with brand strategy mm. and then probably an identity mm. that's pretty much as far yeah. as we want to go with it yeah um you know in the past i was mentioning earlier in the past we we did interiors yeah we did the maison marus and stuff like that mm. we're just kind of like focused now mm. um so i think that if for me as an outsider of your company the sure, difference sure. is rice is strategy brand identity mm. And then I think you guys do a lot more. Mm. I think you probably use your hands a lot more. Yeah. Which is a really nice distinction. Yeah. Sure. Doing identity product design. Mm. You know, we dabble too, but yeah. it's mostly like just for fun. Yeah. Like the uh, plastic people furniture we did. Yeah. Like you just, have a, a retail store that, that showcases some of that work. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's really there just to support like kind of like um, the minutia of what, what we care a lot about like mm. sustainability and mm. like you know that whole thing with plastic people like that was all like just just to make that happen so yeah i think i answered your question <laughs> sure. I'm, a, I'm a mess <laughs> <laughs> no no worries no worries um because i do get that a lot right like uh i'll talk to somebody and they're like oh we're looking at you and right we're looking at you and, sure right? yeah sure where where we do more hands-on work is in our production team yeah so it's really important for us that if we're going to do an identity, 
that we, if we finish out an identity, we want to make sure those things that are made in terms of design assets yeah. are done really, really well. Yeah. Um, so we have a production team yeah. that then starts getting into like materials and mm. finding the right suppliers. But you know, that might be in pa like we might do that for packaging. Mm. If our if our client has a packaged product, we might do that for packaging, or if it's like a you know, we just did like a stock brokerage mm. um, and we're going to do like hats and like, you know, yeah. polo shirts and stuff. Yeah. And we'll like make sure they're really, really good. Yeah. So that's at Rice, that's where the designers get to see things come to life. Mm. Clearly, Maru is like a perfect example of that. Yeah. So much packaging. Mm. And we really learned uh, production through that, through 10 years of working with them. Yeah. Um, and what my wife, Anna, runs that. She's the production director. Um, and then, you know, that's like her whole like team. Yeah. Um, so that's maybe in terms of like product and hands on design, that's probably where we cross over a little bit. Yeah. I imagine you have a lot of producers yeah. on your team. Yeah. Yeah. I think production is where we try to upskill this last two years or year and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Before that, we had one producer, but she was mostly handling spatial design. Right. And then any, you know, like any side project coming from branding that requires production, then we push it to her. Okay. But now we have like dedicated uh, print production and stuff like that. That's good. I yeah. mean, you guys have bakes and you have like all of these things yeah, that need all yeah, this yeah. packaging, which is yeah. super cool. So it, it does help us to learn, but that's one area of weakness we identified about two years ago that we tried to, to change. I see. Yeah. So there's that. Um, yeah, when people come and ask me, oh, what's the difference between you and Rise? Or I'm thinking about joining you too. Um, you know, what should I, uh, I look for? I'd say if you want to go dive deep into the craft uh, of a particular field, you know, typography or certain things, like we share brand strategy and stuff like that. But when you dive deep down to it, I would completely say, we're not going to be as good as Rise. <laughs> you know, just go there. <laughs> But if you want to try maybe typography and how it might work in coding, maybe we can have room to play there. Um, so that's kind of where I draw the distinction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit more breadth. You guys like a lot more depth in certain areas as well. Yeah. Obviously, this is from outside of point of view, right? Sure. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you have to come over and hang out at our studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, too busy to like. We talked about this a couple of years back, right? We wanted to do like a creative community kind of organization. And That's every true. time somebody starts it, it runs out of steam. Yes. Everybody's so busy and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but, but I do hope like Saigon gets to a place where that community is self-sustaining. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's useful for everybody inside. You know? Yeah. It, it, yeah. There's so much potential there. Yeah. It's one of those things that I, like, it just comes up like all the time. Like, we need to do that. Yeah. But it's probably just happening mm -hmm. but i think you guys you guys do a great job of mm -hmm. like opening it up you're publishing so much stuff you're doing podcasts like this like yeah i don't know where you find the energy mm -hmm. um it's a it's a company strategy actually uh it was called open studio yeah so 2019 we had the strategy retreat we had a couple of like uh big pillars so open studio was one so opening up our studio sharing our processes yeah. collaborating with every single person uh, so that was open studio. Yeah. It was a conscious effort. Sure. Yeah. I think um, we, I'm, I'm, I initiate a lot of things mm. at the studio, you know, the, the store is a team effort mm -hmm. that it's there, but you know, it takes a lot of yeah. bandwidth. So yeah. like always like the projects kind of like take yeah, precedent sure. over yeah. everything. I mean, it's the same old story. Mm. Um, our store is like going to host like little events mm. to like highlight some of our clients products and things like that um we will be having a lot more people come through yeah our new studio is like totally amazing and want to get more traffic in mm. but it, the designers whom i would depend on like the whole team like if i'll bring these opportunities yeah and i just i just see if it takes root mm. and then you know sometimes it does and sometimes it's like we want to work on our projects sure 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 okay yeah yeah you know so i think it's incredible that you guys like kind of like churn out like all this content yeah um but i think you have like a, diff a different set so I, I also see a distinction in that like desire to like broadcast and, yeah and for sure for that. sure yeah and uh i mean and uh, i was in that background right advertising and, and copywriting yeah. and stuff so it's easier for me to you know just pick up something and do a little video yeah, yeah. anyways i know you gotta run yeah 
and I gotta have lunch too. So yeah, that would be good. <laughs> yeah. So uh, thanks everyone for listening in. It was great to catch up. We've known each other for 12, 13 years. Uh, but actually, this is like the longest we've ever spoken. I think so too. Aside from like one dinner, one, one night. So it's really cool uh, to see, you know, like you guys doing your thing. We're doing our thing. Uh, we should share notes a lot more. Yeah. I think it will help the community. Yeah, so for sure. Thank you for coming today. Thank yeah. you for having me. Yeah. You want to say anything? See you around. I think we did. I think we did it. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, guys. See you. Take care. Bye.